talked about the first type of duration, which is a duration in time. The first green one over here, you see that? So you see here that you have a major uptrend. And then durations or profit taking typically bring your price back closer to the uptrend line. Whether it's a duration in time like Wilcon, which moves sideways closer to the uptrend line until such a point it's ready to resume magnitude. Or we have what we call a duration in price. Let me ask you, what's harder to participate in? What's harder to buy? What's a harder environment to maneuver in? Durations in time or durations in price? Durations in price are actually much harder. Kasi pababashe. Pababashe, which means that number one, it's scarier. Emotionally, it's harder to participate in. And it's also not like a time duration where it's a sideways box, it's a triangle, it's an ascending triangle, or some form of sideways movement where it's very clear where the support and resistance levels are, and it's very clear where you need to enter, where you need to cut if you're wrong, at what price do you need to hold it. If it breaks out, it's a beginning of an uptrend. Either way, whether it's a duration in time or a duration in price, Duration is very important when it comes to uptrends because uptrends, they only become sustainable because of the profit taking. When prices are moving higher persistently for a continued period of time. Shepre, at some point, people will want to take profits already. And if it goes up 100%, Shepre, prices can't go up 100% straight. Why? Because people will want to take profits along the way. Profit-taking happens. It also creates a new base of buyers that are now holding prices at levels where they won't take profit. Because they don't buy it and take profit at break even. Eh, diba? People will always buy something because they think it's going higher. So what happens is that duration is something good that happens because it sustains the uptrend. As long as it stays above your uptrend line, then you know that it's a duration that you can participate in. So let's take a look at an example of a duration in price. The reason why we're distinguishing between a duration in time and a duration in price is because if it's a duration in time, then we can simply use our support and resistance lines to be able to help us decide how to enter, how to participate in a stock. But if it's a duration in price, then one of the primary techniques that we actually recommend, at least for people that use technical analysis, is what we call in FIBO retracements or Fibonacci retracements, right? So FIBO retracements is actually the primary tool we use to participate in a stock that is undergoing a duration in price. So let me show you an example. So this is Ayala Land. What do we see in Ayala Land for the past two years? We see, at least we've seen a short-term downtrend, maybe for the past few months. But for the majority of the two years, what did we see? We saw a uptrend. Are these uptrends the types of opportunities that we want to focus on? Yes or no? Yes, right? So how do we participate in an uptrend like this? Right? So we see here, mind you, this is a weekly chart. So we see prices hitting a low over here and retesting that low over here. And then prices start to move higher in what looks like a low and then a high, right? You guys see that? But the question is, how do we participate in an uptrend as early as possible and benefit from a low, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, right? Do we want to come in here when prices have already gone up significantly? One of the ways that you can do is to participate in the early durations 
So if I zoom in over here, what if there was a way that you could actually participate in this higher low over here, right? For this particular duration over here, is this a duration in time or a duration in price? Duration in price. You know what's a duration in price? When it's not moving sideways, it's moving with a downward bias. So the primary tool that we use is what we call a Tebow retracement. And I'm not, I'm not showing this to you because it's something available in hindsight. What we're showing you is an actual trade that we did at this particular point in time using this particular tool, using the particular framework of magnitude and duration. So using your Fibonacci or your FIBO retracement, just click on the tool on the upper left side, click on FIBO over here, select. And what you simply do is that you click from the bottom, from the low, from the first low, all the way to the high. What this tool did is that it created potential support levels for Let's say, for example, Ayala Land is something that you want to participate in. And then all of a sudden, kita mo, oh, parang pababa na. How do I identify? Remember what we said earlier. We said that you only want to buy when prices are bouncing off support or if prices are breaking out of a resistance, area pattern resistance. Now, in this case, what the FIBO does it creates the support for you. So you now are able to create an opportunity where you can buy a bounce of support. And what, how this happened was, after we saw prices move up here, one, two, three, four, five, we saw prices move up here, we saw prices pull back, we drew, we used this exact same technique and then what we did was that as it was going below these horizontal levels, do you guys see the three horizontal levels over here? So we treated those as potential areas of support, which means that as that was happening, we were already watching, mentally preparing ourselves to watch a bounce of support at those levels. And what did we see? We saw... Prices go through the first level, go through the second level, and then lastly, we have a first uptick. You see that green candlestick over there? Right above the 618 FIBO support. Were we certain, confident, or even guaranteed that prices would go up over here? Of course not. But what we were certain was, if we buy the first uptick, if we're wrong, then we would be cutting at a small loss. That was the only thing we were certain of. But what happened here? First uptick, we buy our first position. We buy 10%. It goes up, follows through the next day. Oy, okay. Tama yung position. And it does a sideways move. What do we call this? Duration in? Duration in time. So as it does in duration in time, where can you now, if you want to add to your position, average up in your position, build on a winning position, where can you now add to your position? After entering here, you can now add either at the bounce of support or at the breakout of area pattern resistance. Is that right? So that's exactly what we did. We added right here as prices were breaking out of the mini duration happening. The mini sideways duration. All the while keeping in context that we were buying a low high, higher low, and a potential higher high inside what we think is going to be an uptrend. And after buying a position there, prices move up and then it pulls back. It's a mini duration, right? It's a mini duration inside a larger magnitude. Why does duration happen? Because people are profit taking. So I can treat this as maybe a mini duration in price. So maybe I can draw at least another FIBO from here. 
And as I zoom in, prices rebound off the 50% support level. You guys see that? You draw FIBO retracements. Why? Because you want to be able to create support areas where prices can potentially bounce as a higher low or as a the next higher low, the higher, higher low, right? So after this in particular, what exactly happened? When we zoom out, that was essentially how me and my teammates built a nine-digit position in an uptrend in Ayala land. And what happened after finishing our last position here? Sold everything, I think, uh, started selling maybe here, sold here, sold here, right? And this is something that you can actually apply not just, I mean, this is something not just professionals can apply. This is something that also a lot of uh, retail investors can apply as well, right? 